my name is Jude Madelich Hall, and this is Titles, Talk, and Tipples. My guests today are the Toontones, Carl Sin, Wei, ooh, the old hot dog, <laughs> is the bass player, Brent Cognito is that devil down there, the drummer, and Kyle Ransom King, the guitarist and singer. Woohoo! Welcome to Tones. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be here. <laughs> what are you guys drinking? Uh, I'll go first, I guess. Uh, I am drinking a Halloween rum punch. It's cranberry juice, apple juice, ginger ale, and uh, rum. Nice. Next. I am drinking a uh, death in the afternoon, even though it is not afternoon. Well, uh, I just have blood. It's blood. organic. I think I do too. cheers cheers all right so i'm sure you guys get the question this question all the time is where how did the band come about oh okay uh (laughs) just gonna jump right in there (laughs) yeah we've all known each other for a really long time like since high school and the two of them were in a band together in high school and uh and then i guess we were all in jazz band um uh and then as so we've stayed in touch over the years and then um a couple years back i started writing a lot uh and they all were kind of like i just had like the the flood Mm -hmm. and they and they were all just kind of like fun spooky zombie songs and i was then i just found it really easy to do and i showed them a couple at like a campfire one day i think it was at a Carl had like a beers giving party at his house or something. And I played Girl the zombie. Yeah. And Brent was like, that's cool. And then, so then we had dinner a couple of weeks later and I happened to have thought of the name, the tomb tones in the meantime. And I was like, I've had this idea, but I don't know how to make it all work. And they were like, let's just do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we jammed for what, like two or three hours just on, you know, some of your stuff is like, yeah, Kyle, just start playing something. Jesse and I will follow. And uh, yep. yeah. Very close. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool. Cause um, I was wondering how the process was of a song, you know, so like who writes them? Um, how do you guys tackle them? So you just go for it. You get the words and then you go for it. The, for the songwriting process. Um, so I like to think like kind of, I, uh, a lot of my writing I do when I'm mowing and walking and driving and stuff like that. And it kind of starts out as like mumbles almost. And that's, that was the thing that I had the hardest time with for a long time. Like I was in bands in my twenties, but the songs all sucked and the, and the bands never got off the ground. We broke up after like three or four months. It's true. Except we've, we've, we've now the zombie horde is an old one that I like kind of brought back around in wormhole. Um, But, uh, but yeah, so I'll hear like these kind of just mumbling melodies and then, I'll think of like a concept of like, what if it was a song about usually here, there's like a bumper sticker moment. It'll be like as something dead meat. And then from that point, I just start building it outwards. And then I have the, so I'll come up with the bare bones and stuff. And sometimes they throw a concept and we work it out. And then, uh, but then all the arrangement and all the good stuff, all the hooks and everything come from like, jamming for them on for like months basically it takes to like arrange all the little like stops and the like Mm -hmm. the things that make it like that make you like yeah yeah (laughs) um yeah so do you guys um do you read music or is it all by ear what how do you guys go about it i guess Brent, you don't really count in that because drum <laughs> drummers. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm sorry. I they, y'all two can read music, can't you? Can't like, well, it's a different kind okay, of music, right? Well, uh, yeah. well, and like you know, uh, I can barely read I, English, I, so I don't know. I was I was a guitar player for. I've been playing guitar for like twenty years. I've been playing drums for. How long's the band been together? <laughs> like I literally started three, three and a half years, 2017, four years I, almost. I tackled before, but it was that that first night when we decided to have a jam session and jam on the songs. We went into Kyle's studio at his old house, and there's a V drum kit and a bass and a guitar. And of course, you know, Kyle grabbed the guitar and uh Carl grabbed the bass, and I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> 
then when we decided, okay, hey, man, I think this thing ha- might have legs. Let's uh, let's keep going. And I was like, well, shit, I guess I need to buy a drum set. <laughs> Time <Yeah>. to practice. <laughs> yeah. so, um, it's been great. <laughs> but I think they, I think the two of them can read music. I've always been terrible at it. Okay. Um, yeah. But, we, but, the, but for the writing for like the band stuff, it's all by ear. And yeah. kind of like, wait, what if you did like a put a gun? Like, and then yeah. he'll do it. <laughs> I've never, honestly, I was going to say, uh, trying to explain what I'm hearing in my head to you guys out loud makes me embarrassed to say I have two degrees in music because the words and things that I say and use, <laughs> it's exactly that. Well, what if you did something like, you know what I mean? Isn't that the way with creativity, right? Is whatever's in your head, you're like doing the best you can to get it out. And it never <laughs> comes out the way it's in your head. That's what I meant by like mumble writing too. It's like a bunch of like the writing. It's just like, and then I'll like just remember that. Or sometimes I'll pull out my phone. If it's a really good one, I'll be like, I can't forget this one. Yeah. And then I'll listen back to it later and like, piece things together until it works. <laughs> what was I think one of, the, uh, one of the nice things about, you know, us having such a long history, you know, we've known each other since we were teenagers yeah. is like have that kind of trust and camaraderie. And it comes out in the writing process where Kyle will bring a song to us and it's like, okay, let's jam on it. And, you know, we aren't afraid to have crappy ideas with each other, you know, it'd be like, oh, yeah. hey, this and then we do it go oh well that sounded awful okay let's try something else like you know so it's like kind of it helps us get out of our own way creatively where we're willing to try things out where i think if you know i've I've played with other people where everybody's kind of like you know a little hesitant to kind of go outside the box and you know so that's it's really nice playing in a band with your best friends because you're you know you're not afraid to look stupid because they're probably gonna call you stupid anyway regardless yeah. <laughs> yeah nobody wants to suck i think that's a good point is that nobody wants yeah. to suck but we embrace sucking so it works in the long run because we <laughs> iron those parts out right that's great so you guys hold each other in a nice space yeah and if we like if we mess up on stage or something it's like oh yeah. Like, like, yeah you know I've, I've read all this stuff where it's like you're not supposed to like acknowledge it or anything but we'll be oh. like and like make a face at each other like that. <laughs> or brent will just be like <laughs> and it works it works yeah. for like the the vibe our li- our live vibe is like it's very casual it's very I'm fun sure i accidentally hit carl with a drumstick one time because it like flew out of my hand like our, our oh stage. yeah yeah well my um my kiddo and my husband are both drummers guitar and my husband's a guitarist um and i'm a violinist so i understand like the mute but but i'm like I, I sit in an orchestra with a conductor can, with mm-hmm. sheet music in front of my face. So I, I'm not good at playing by ear and the, you know, it's, it's really great though, that you guys, um, I've been told before not to point out that you've made a mistake, you know, when you're on stage or whatever, but I think sometimes the audience has fun with that too. So we <laughs> give them a little treat. I mean, it, obviously you're not going to do it every time, but you can sure. make it feel organic or you can like, yeah. you know, right. It's just, yeah, we, like, we're not afraid to, I guess, is that's the better way to put it. Is that like, yeah, if something yeah, happened, like, yeah. I, like we played Dragon Con a couple weeks ago and it was like, we started a song and like, I think it was me started on the completely wrong note. And it was like, well, that's not that version that we're going to play right now. Let's try yeah. the other version. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's nice having the- you know having been in both worlds like that because you know i don't i don't play in any like large ensembles like that anymore you know an orchestra or concert band or anything and i've said a few times how much i miss it because it's such a different feeling of here's a large ensemble that's prepared you know your part you know what your role is what you're doing everyone sits and does something that they've practiced out Versus, you know, like how Kyle described it, an organic kind of feeling of, yeah, this is how the song goes, but that might not be how we play it this time, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, to be able to do that. And especially in a performance setting where, yeah, of course we've practiced it, but, you know, how did it go this time? Well, a little bit different, but, yeah. you know, we all were able to go along with each other because that's just that's part like of when it. you and oh. me played that solo that show, just the two of us at con. And it was like, it had a completely different feel than like almost any other show we've ever done. Because I, yeah, I think every it felt single like song you're like, Brent couldn't like make a, a show. Sweet. We played four times at Dragon Con and Brent couldn't make one of them. So we were just like, 
let's just do guitar and bass. <laughs> and like, and it felt really cool and different. And it was like, we just vibed with it. Yeah. yeah. What were you going to say, Carl? Were you? Oh yeah. I was just going to say every single song that's normally like straight came out. swung. <laughs> I think the whole show was just like a, you know, totally alternate version of every song. It was, yeah, That's it was good. weird and fun. Yeah. We should ditch Brent more often. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> the audience too. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we didn't hear you, Brent. <laughs> oh, I was saying it, I get it. That, you know, it sounds like they had more fun without me. Right, oh, we don't have to keep that. We can just keep time with our feet with the taps. <laughs> can you yeah. time Kyle? <laughs> Not you well. <laughs> you could put a tambourine under your foot. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> right, real right, out of the show. Is right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how? Um, let's see. I'll. Uh, and oh, d- so Brent and Carl, do you ever write the words to a song, or is it all up to? No, I, I can't write words. I tried write. before, and I'll have. So and Kyle knows this. I've I've come up with a few ideas, and I have a little booklet where I'll think, oh, this is a great concept for a song. But then the concept goes from like brain to, and then it gets stuck at like shoulder. <laughs> it never comes out of the hand through pen or, or keyboard or anything. I just can't like translate it that way. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm that, pretty grateful pro- that Kyle is one that's able to do that because, you know, I can, I can help out with a musical idea, but something with writing lyrics is just never, um, never really worked for me. That's, that's one thing where our, kind of writing and arranging process and it can be fun though like um one of our songs devil's train of death we literally wrote it we were kind of just jamming at practice and i was like hey we should write a song about a train but like a spooky one and i started playing the and then we just kind of went with it and like it went through like four different versions and like um we I think we originally were going to write it called Transylvania Express. And then we yeah. realized a very well-known song by that name. And it was like, oh, that's probably why it was in my brain. Okay. I, I think the Meteors are Batmobile. There's another Psychobilly <laughs> band that has a song called Transylvania Express. And we were like, but oh. we'll have to figure out something that rhymes with Transylvania Express. Yeah. Uh, or the word express, because I think we use right. it in the song. Yeah. But, there's, but there's other times, like I know, Carl, you said, what if we did a song about the sixth sense? And I was like, sick sense. Oh, God. that is no, that is how that whole song came about. Is just yeah. <laughs> sick. Sense. You know, and, and you know what? When you when you texted that saying, "What if we did a song about the sixth sense?" You know where I was? I was mowing. I do, and it's like <laughs> that's where the magic happens. Is out in the yard. I, and I, then, think, I think for the sake of the band, you need to be doing as much mowing as possible. I, and, I probably and, should. That's I mowed the other day and I came inside and wrote two, two songs immediately afterwards. There's got to be some like, like yeah. magic crack in my yard or something. I've got a front in the backyard. Same. You know? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You'll have to use your mower though, because I bet you anything, it's your mower. Something about the vibrations. Of ours the, like, ours is a tractor. You can, you can awesome. sit and and write while you mow oh a tractor we should do a tractor yeah. song there you go just talking about mowing hay, a hayride song a haunted hayride come oh, on man yeah. yes yes why there. can we do call you, it do you hay see how you just saw yeah. how the process happens you just watching the, process the creative happens. process yeah and exactly. then like, and then there was another one that i think was uh babadookie you that was one that you just threw out you said what if, what if we did a song about the babadook and we just and i was like well i took a little look and it was like, like it just we wrote that like it was, there was no was writing the process we it, was like, it was like there was no writing process we literally yeah. just played it the first time oh wow yeah. so do you guys record like every time you rehearse just in case something comes up uh i've thrown down my phone a few times if we're because that's how baba duck got recorded and six cents i think the first time got recorded um but we don't no i'd say no we don't normally make a habit of of like throwing anything out uh, yeah unless it's like that was a good idea let's grab that <laughs> real quick yeah 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 so you guys must have really good memories no my memory no. Oh, okay <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah. I'm notoriously bad at rem- remembering my own lyrics. I love how quiet it got. I, uh, I forgot. Kyle sent us a, a reminder at like five or seven or something. He's like, hey, just just don't forget. Got the interview tonight. I was like, of course I didn't forget. Who would have done that? <laughs> Good thing I had this hot dog costume ready. <laughs> I was already wearing it. I, I am themed cool too. Costumes. I'm I know I'm not in a straight up costume, but I'm I'm Halloweenified. Yeah, I am too. You just can't tell I am. So I've got these cool little it's like skull paisleys. Like there's little skulls inside the paisleys, but you oh, can't I like see that. that. Yeah. yeah. You can't like see that. that part. So oh well. <laughs> and I've got bats and spiders on my oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you a big Halloween person? Oh, yeah. Like what you're seeing, my house could look like this at any time. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So you found out about us through Patrick, Patrick right? Patrick Green, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so tell us, I mean, we've talked about ourselves a little bit. Can you, I don't know that much about your, like your show and I know you're an okay. author. Can you just like give us the rundown and like how you found us and all that stuff? Yeah. yeah sure. Welcome to our show. Go ahead and introduce <laughs> no, I, yeah, I know. I know it's your interview, but I, it's, I'd also well, like to know you. Anything you, you're looking to plugs and new, you know, then. Well, and here, here's some serendipity. So we've got the tomb tones and titles, talk and tipples, triple, uh, what would that be? Quite quintuple T's? <laughs> yeah, quint is that yeah, quintuple T. Yeah. So that's serendipity right there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my it. yeah. Um this show actually came about on accident because I was I would never have done a podcast. Like I was, you know, the podcast thing has boomed. And um, my publisher actually talked me into get starting a channel on YouTube. And I was like, well, I'm a writer. What the hell am I going to do on YouTube? He said, you're going to read your book. I'm like, well, my book's not out yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he was like, you'll come up with something. And this is what I came up with. I'm like, I'm going to talk to other writers. And then it became, oh, you know, then I started meeting people that do comic books. So I got involved with some illustrators and then talking to Patrick Green was actually what gave me the idea to get some of the musicians he knew on because I'm like, well, titles, that can be anything. It doesn't have to just be books. It can be anybody that writes, you know, yeah, creative types. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so if, for, if you guys don't remember uh, Patrick, I don't know if you know him or if you're Facebook friends with him. Patrick was uh, wrote the review for a blog called Fear Writer for us um, a couple oh, months yeah. back. Uh, it, was a, it was a really nice uh, review. That sound familiar? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's. Yeah, but I, I had been in a horror punk group, I think, on Facebook, and I saw a guy put up a post of a band that he had done a review for, and I read it, and I was like, "This is actually really well written. I like the style and everything." And I think, and I think, based on kind of the way that he'd written it, that he would dig our stuff. So I sent him the link to our album, and he had a review up like later that week, and I was like, "Oh, that's, that's great." Cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's so, hu- he's huge into oh, yeah. like the horror punk, horror metal, like all the different names of it. But mm-hmm. yeah, and um, and and that was it. So um, I started a Facebook, a writer's Facebook group that expanded to more people, and that's how I met him was through my Facebook group. And, okay, because uh, I just started like I've got to get writers involved with this because because I'm not you know I I started it for myself and I like well writers are kind of boring <laughs> you know it's like hey i put out a novel this year you know and oh my next novel's coming out next year and that's kind of it <laughs> so, that's about how we are with albums but we do play a lot of shows in between yeah yeah so but with writers we're not we really doing shows, shows <laughs> yeah so yeah and um so i just started reaching out to other writers and was like okay i'm gonna do stuff for other writers and in the process i'll get myself out there Okay, that's, that's a, a really good networking idea. That's Could awesome. You imagine, do y'all remember? I don't know how much Monty Python you ever like watched or listened to, oh. but they had a great skit about like the live writing of a novel. <laughs> I don't think I saw. <laughs> like, that could one. you imagine an event like that? Of that, you know, some famous novelist sits down and everyone's, oh, he's gonna write his first word. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> backspace, backspace. Oh well, I guess it wouldn't have been backspace. It would have been. 
Well, I guess it was Backspace on typewriters. Was he on an old typewriter? Oh, yeah. It, it was something oh, yeah. like he sits down and, you know, or actually it was just pen and paper, you know, ready to write his first oh, word. Yeah. And, oh, he's doodled his name in the corner. Not a great start. OK, well. <laughs> it's like a tennis match. A moderator. I think I do remember that. I'm going to have to find it now and post it's it. It's a great skit. It's so good. <laughs> I just, uh, my husband and I are watching a bit of Fry and Lori. Have you guys watched that? Yes. So, yeah, I'm like, lot, if you know I, Monty Python, it. yeah, it's a sketch show too. And, mm-hmm. and there was this really hilarious uh, skit about a guy not understanding the book J- Jane Eyre. And it was called something, Balls was the name of the <laughs> He was like, Jane Eyre is balls <laughs> and everything was balls. <laughs> I think as an American, it's mostly just fun to see Hugh Laurie be so British. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was going to ask what the weirdest place was that you've ever written lyrics, but you've kind of already talked about on the lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> the yard quite a bit. Um <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny, though, for me, a lot of my ideas, similar concept, not so much like out in the yard, but somewhere that I can't do something about it. (laughs) You know, it's either like I'm in bed, I've just woken up for no reason, or like I'm in the shower or, (laughs) you know, somewhere that I'm in, I'm in no position to like even record this as a like whistling or something, you know. <laughs> well, so your, so. your brain is idling, I think. They, they think that's when the, the juice flows is because if you're oh, at yeah. work or something, you've got all these other inputs and distractions. Whereas also, if you're doing something just kind of brainless, morning, you yeah. want to like think about other stuff. Yeah. First thing in the morning or right before you really should have been in bed like an hour ago Yeah. Oh, is gosh, when it starts yeah. happening. That's, mm-hmm. the, that's a tough one, especially when you're trying to be an adult and put yourself on a decent (laughs) schedule. That's why I liked it so much. You know, years ago I was working just freelance. And so I had, you know, every morning was a late morning. So of course, yeah, I'll stay up late and, you know, write a bunch of just BS song ideas. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Carl will do that. He'll send us like, it'll be like two o'clock in the morning. He'll be like, check out the Dropbox. And there will be like a little jingle in there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Brent, say that again. For some reason, when we're talking and you start to talk, we can't hear you. Oh, weird. oh I I was saying, yeah, like the Dropbox that Carl will be like 2 a.m. Check the Dropbox. It's like a 30 second clip of, you know, a bluegrass punk fusion song that he's made. Yep. <laughs> Not, almost yeah. none of them are full songs, though. So I, sometimes I we take like ideas like from them and turn them into long ideas. Else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you can probably get melodies and out of it right and so and some of them are, are like i've written into like i know there's one like a baseline you wrote that i turned into a song and it's just been on the back burner for so long that's the thing too is like you get these spurts where you write like 15 songs in like over a couple of weeks and then that's way more than you're going to be able to like workshop as a band over any reasonable amount of time and so then you end up like i've got this huge backlog of stuff and i'm writing new stuff now and i'm like well i guess we're going to be like 45 before we eventually learn this one but yeah have though you know to have a lot of stuff in the hopper as opposed to that's true yeah. that's a good point yeah hey, yeah because if the you best don't ones then yeah let's make a talk about a haunted uh looks around the room a lamp haunted <laughs> song let's go yeah this is you why can you come out with songs, a whole lot right? of crap if you don't have that backlog <laughs> yeah no no haunted lamp songs for no us. okay okay now out of spite i'm gonna write the haunted lamp song there you go. <laughs> and you will play it, will smile. <laughs> and you will like it. <laughs> yeah. Turn off the lights. See, that's a good song title. Turn off the lights. It's a little yeah. too. Had to come in and bogart my. my oh, idea. man. <laughs> yeah. You said well, it was. Turn a- the lights off is already a song. Though. Oh, and you're already workshopping titles. It, it, the wheels turn. The, I can't control how they turn. How about don't look behind you? Ooh. Good one. <laughs> I'm sitting in front of a window right now and I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're in the worst. What if this closet just like started opening? Oh, and I should have had my wife and- hide in there and like randomly at some point just be like <laughs> <laughs> but never actually like fully come out of there. She has to stay in the whole time and just randomly peek. 
Knowing how <laughs> it's small just like it's an like, animatronic. Some it's like fingers Disney around the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has to make like the the uh, air piston sounds while she does it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna creep up behind you. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, so um, what I did notice about your songs, and um, I haven't listened to every single one, but I've listened to quite a few, is I love it because it actually, each song kind of, it tells a story. So it's not just like, you know, how some songs are just basically lyrics, you know, it's like, this is a love song, this is a blah, blah song, you know, and you you kind of, not all songs tell a story, but you guys is actually do, like the, my girlfriend's a zombie yeah, <laughs> that's a great story from like start to finish of how she became a zombie, how she wants to eat, <laughs> eat, eat him. And yeah, so yeah. Um, is that on? Per- oh, Brent, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, our running gag used to be that, like, you know, we really wanted to make horror movies, but we don't have the budget for that. So we make three minute horror movie scripts set to music. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. And that one has a little nod to the CDC in it, which is from before the times, but it's become incredibly relevant now. And yeah. we get to <laughs> make that inappropriate joke every time we're on stage. Right. Now. Well, people will actually <laughs> um, know what you're talking about, whereas before they might not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Little name drop. Yeah. They haven't given us any, you know, you would think that they would be like, hey, check out this song about us. But no. I, I think they might have some slightly higher priorities right now. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, you know, maybe just it's, a it's just sitting in their inbox. I'm, you know, no, I've never actually sent it to them, but that would be hilarious if I did. I totally, uh, I totally should. Just so you guys know, I thought you might dig this song that name drops the CDC. Well, I think they liked it. So they gave me a free vaccine, man. They like well, yeah, it a lot. Too. Really? <laughs> <laughs> They're free. You can get as many as you want. <laughs> Literally as many as you want. <laughs> just, just give them a fake name every time. And just keep... They're like Pokemon, man. You got to catch them all. Get all three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, to your question. Yeah, there is. Yeah, the storytelling. I don't know if I would say it's deliberate, but it's it's natural. That's just kind of like when I start writing, that's just I can't do the you know, this song just saying like, like we play Wooly Bully a lot. Like that's oh, yeah. one that we cover a lot. And, but that one, it does have like a slight story, but not very much. It's just like, this guy told this girl, this thing. And then they yeah. said, Wooly Bully. Like, but like, I would have a really hard time writing a song like that. That's just like simple. It's like, yeah. for whatever reason, I have to do these verses that, go somewhere and that's just what's natural i should try to write more fun stupid stuff a zombie hordes a little bit like that oh. I, uh, it's uh, a lot a bit like that that song doesn't have much of a story if we're honest it does I mean, there's not or I mean, have <laughs> it does <Yeah>. not, <laughs> not <right>. or, okay <laughs> I, <laughs> you'll never get away what more do you need that is the, uh, that is the story that's true you'll it, never it, get it, away it, oh wait uh, i almost showed my bottle of blood wine i mean blood <laughs> Yeah, I, I am. I'm on E over here and I'm like wishing that I would have made a second one. Well, um, we we can we can take a break and go pour some more if you guys want an intermission. I might yeah. I might want to do that in a minute. I was going to say, though, while, while we're on the subject of Kyle's lyrics, like, yes. uh, one funny thing, this is Kyle and I've had these conversations before where. I'll compliment on his lyrics. I'm like, dude, man, that was such that's such a beautiful metaphor that you've created here. And he'll be like. What are you talking about? It's, uh, <laughs> I'm like, no, man, like my girlfriend's a zombie. It's like, it's a metaphor for like holding on to the past and how if you hold on to the past too long, it will consume you and kill you. Because he was wanting to stay with his girlfriend who's a zombie and she bites him and the virus spreads and now he's dead. And he was like, dude, you're way overthinking. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little, I mean... Yeah, maybe. But I do. Sometimes there's a little bit of like a double thing that, yeah, I think it makes it more interesting if it's about something instead of just being like graveyards yeah. and monsters. <laughs> like it's if there's I mean, horror, that's how horror is like so much of horror is like about. It, yeah, it's something metaphor. else, yeah. you know, about the human experience or about yeah. mortality or about 
love or loss and all these other things. And I, and I was a film major. So like I've, I've was trained to absorb these subliminal if I could actually say the word, uh, what was that? <laughs> subliminal, sub- sub- these subliminal <laughs> messages. Um, yeah, but messages. so like I was, yeah, I was kind of taught to to be able to watch movies and see that type of stuff. So I don't know. I think sometimes it's it's interesting too. But that's a part of film theory as well. Is like you might take something from a movie that like you're like you saw that and you can make an argument that the that the director intended it, but maybe they didn't. You know. And it's like, if you can see it there, then, and I'm sure you as a writer have had that same thing too, where you write something and it's like, did I mean to put this message here? I don't right. know. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes it's not, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, so Brent, you're kind of the art critic, the person that like <laughs> defines what an artist was trying to do, you know, from like 300 years ago. <laughs> I do. I, I, I have a lot of uh, like thinking time. Like when I watch something, I like to kind of deconstruct it and break it down. Like my my girlfriend hates watching movies. Like she does not have <laughs> span for it, and like, I don't like to watch movies by myself a lot mm. uh, unless I know somebody else. Like if Kyle or Jesse has said like, "Hey man, you need to watch this movie," then I'll watch it by myself so that I can talk. But I'm one of those people who like. Okay, we just spent two hours watching this movie. Now let's spend an hour. Yeah, talking. <laughs> yeah I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. I like doing that. Yeah, my husband and I, we just recently watched the entire Aliens. Uh, well, no, I think I think we haven't watched the latest one, but um, I can't remember. What did you say? Covenant. Yeah, we, we haven't watch watched that one. So we yeah. actually, I was going to say, we have not actually watched the whole thing. But we that's the only one we have left. We must have talked about Prometheus for three days. Yeah. <laughs> and then we realized that there were some things, like if you if you spend too long doing that, suddenly you start finding holes. <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah. Dang I it. mean, I actually, I'm one of the few people, I think, who enjoyed Prometheus. But it's like, that movie deliberately left so many gaps that's like it's just it's not one of those things where you're supposed to know everything that happened i think you're just supposed to see this window of what happened and then move on with life and just wonder about it yeah i definitely like talking about movies oh yeah (laughs) how about the worst place you guys have ever performed if there is one right first place we performed i like i want to say dragon con is both the best and the worst i would agree with that like yeah because it which dragon con is this massive pop culture convention that happens here um in atlanta like five uh like a hundred thousand people came in 2019 i think it would i think they capped it at like fifty thousand for this year but still very large but uh the we've played a main stage show two years in a row and then we've played three like kind of concourse they call it like kind of like a little stage set up like in a side area and it's been the best the the good parts have been the best we've ever played and then it's kind of been like the it was the best of gigs and the worst, the worst of gigs. Of yeah well and it's not that we necessarily played bad but maybe that it was just there was the people was were just stressful. passing and nobody like yeah it's like it's it's really high stress you've got to like go to and from it's really hard to navigate crowds and everything yeah yeah you know getting what, though, a, honestly i would say here, even the here. gig itself isn't really that stressful it's that getting to the gig is yeah. so stressful oh yeah i mean this year for the gig that kyle and i did alone without brent we, I mean, it, it was like truly a stroke of pure luck that we even made it on time yeah. because mm-hmm. we just happened to stumble into a like guest services driver. It was like, Hey, you, you know, y'all look like you could use a van to get where you're going. Like, oh yeah. After that'd be waiting great. on an elevator for you like even, 20 minutes. Yeah. Do you even know oh, where wow. we could get a van? It's like, well, how about this van right here? <laughs> like, oh, okay. like pulled up. And it was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it was like we guys, waited, yeah, that was crazy because we waited on an elevator for like twenty minutes, which the elevators are impossible to get at Dragon Con. Which actually, this is cool. Have you watched Loki, the Loki show? I haven't. No. Okay, so like the so where they filmed the like the kind of like otherworldly place that that oh, show okay. takes place in, 
they filmed it in the hotel that we were like staying at. So you're like, there's a big famous scene from the trailers where they're like riding an elevator. And it's like, that's the elevator that we were waiting on. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it takes like half an hour to call it to you. Cause people it took a lot of time. Oh. Yes. Oh, Oh, very nice. I just, <laughs> my favorite part about that story is that you guys got into a van without question. Like yeah. a random dude. It was van, clearly like, a dragon. No, it, it had we dragon like, con. It had guest services in the dash. I saw yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. After yeah. we were driving. Yeah. Okay, like, I'm just saying you guys are the easy murder. That's we'll just leave that, it at that. But that one was that one was stressful. Yeah, uh, you know that I don't feel like we've really played any. We haven't ever like completely bombed a show yet. Oh God, now we will. And then <laughs> put it out there, man. You put it out there. You can't do yeah. that. You got to at some point though, right? And and half the time, like what we're talking about is if you don't make a big deal about it, the audience is never going to know. I think that's why we haven't bombed a show is because we've like roll we've always just rolled off it there was one time my amp didn't work and that was oh that was bad oh, that was God, traumatic that, and then i figured yeah. it out I, like it was like panic mode and then i figured out it was a grounding issue and i just set it differently and it sprang to life made it through the show and then died completely oh wow that was <laughs> that, was, that was very lucky so that was was that in charleston yeah yeah that was that. I think the oh, end of that's the right. Being an out of town gig. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was in Monroe, but although that one you had to borrow Slim's guitar, right? That was also true. There was some learning. There was some learning curves. All, oh, all Kyle, mine. Kyle, all Kyle. me fucking up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can I say that? I don't know. Um, so I'm going to Dragon Con next year with my what? book. Yeah, I am. Oh, like, I have, what, yes. what part of the country are you in? I'm in Oregon. I'm like, I'm three hours oh, behind we, you guys. We couldn't be yeah. farther apart. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> like the did, you, are, did you just decide to go or did no. you? No. Get- so I have a friend that lives in Seattle. Um, met met her online. We've actually gotten together a couple of times because Seattle is only like three hours away from I am. I'm, I'm in Astoria, Oregon. If you're familiar with the Goonies movie, that's where I am. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, she, I guess she has like a timeshare in Atlanta, Georgia. And she was like, do you want to go to the dragon? Cause she's a writer too. And so of course, getting a booth uh, at a con um, for a writer, it's always good to have more than one person. Yeah. So someone yes. can schmooze while the other one is at the booth. And so she was like, well, I have a place there. Let's, let's go to dragon con next year. I'm sweet. Like, sweet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we are able to perform again and you could see us live. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll apply. It's all, there's no guarantees. It's like, you never find out until like the wire. And then it's like, yeah, it's like, Oh it's really? Oh wire. gosh. Yeah. At least that's how it's been for us. It was kind of like, you know, we found out in the summer, which it's like, it's early September. So it's like, by then it's like, yeah. Oh, hey, you commit and you go. Yeah, you're doing dragon wow. here. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, there's ways to get it. Like, I don't know who to ask, but I'm sure if you reach out to them and try to get on like a panel or something like that, that could be good for you as well. Yeah. Oh, see, yeah. I don't know anything about that. Um, you know, my <laughs> my whole idea is who who's going to know me? Why would I be on a panel? But I could totally do <laughs> it's, it. It's like <laughs> just all do this creative types. Like, there's panels for like everything. Yeah, there's. I think the fact that reading you are an like, author gives you the credibility to be able to do that. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, I'll see you guys next year. Yeah. yeah. I've already, yeah. Regardless of where, whether we play or not, I've already got passes. So nice. Yeah, hit so we'll me up on there. Facebook and just be like, "Hey, I'm I'm here. Come say hi." So yeah, definitely. We'll take pictures and we'll we'll do like a if well when I'll say when not if. Yeah. So, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> cool. And, um, you know, because like you guys can't play music for us because it doesn't work on these kinds of situations because it'll just pick up on one of you guys playing. Otherwise, I'd have you play music. So you can then. I mean, I, I have my acoustic. If you want me to play a song, I will. I'll just like, play it through my speakers here. I got to yeah. <laughs> you, maybe maybe you could play some of that synth bass. Just hold one note out the whole time. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, because play, of you. Carl and I will hold lighters up. There you go. Oh, oh yeah. Brent, you could you could do the clap, and so even if we don't hear it, we'll see the beat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll see it like 
half a second behind. Like, right. the video. So it'll be like normal. It'll the be like band with the worst rhythm ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> be like, well, yeah, I'm on TV. I'll play my trombone with the left hand on the slide. Jeez, can't believe everyone gets that one wrong. Oh gosh, movies. Maybe my glasses oh. up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That kind of that kind of reminds me of like movies that have when anytime someone's playing a violin on a movie or a TV show, I have to avert my eyes. I know. Like I can't watch. I can't watch. It's so wrong. So I don't, yeah, I do the exact same thing. I don't know about you, Brent and Kyle, but I cannot not stare at musicians on screen because it's like I want to know if you know how to act. You know, do yeah. you know, what to know how like? to pretend like you're playing this instrument? Yeah. Yeah. Or it's and like when you see the the upright bass player and he's just like doing a big pepper <laughs> shaker, yeah. you know, kind of thing. It's like, all right, you don't know what's up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my favorite is like if you see the violinist like holding their violin like this, I'm like, Oh yeah. Or the or the bow is <laughs> the bow hair is super loose. Yeah, I I really loved Mozart in the jungle, but the the lead character like was supposedly this amazing violinist and I couldn't watch it. And then one of the other actors played the cello and I'm like, oh, my God, he's really playing the cello. So I looked him up and I found out that I can't remember his name. He's a pretty well-known actor. Sorry, I can't remember his name, but um, he actually plays the cello. So I always appreciate that. <laughs> it's a good That's detail, one thing I appreciated you know? about the uh, the the film School of Rock. Yes. You know, th those kids were really playing. Those, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Is that for real? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Those kids really played all that what? stuff. That's cool. Okay. The, guy who played, uh, the, the guy who played uh, the guitar player actually got arrested a couple years ago for stealing a guitar. <sighs> you know. Okay. That's, he, uh, he shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. But you're not hardcore that movie. unless you live hardcore. Oh, that's, that's true. true. He didn't have to. You're not hardcore. He could. <laughs> We're dorks. <laughs> you're not hardcore. You're just dorks. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't. Oh, be yeah. Hardcore. Well, none of you guys have a degree in playing the bassoon. So What's I bassoon? really I really like the bassoon. I could go get my diploma. It's framed. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's on the floor, but it's still framed. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do we not have bassoon in our song? You should. Now you have to. You have to somehow bring a bassoon. Do you know how much your audience Sorcerer's would Apprentice, love man. that? Sorcerer's Apprentice remix. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we'll do something. We'll do. We gotta. That's we gotta figure something out there. Well, you could actually play bass notes on a bassoon right oh yeah yeah you could totally play anything that you just like like if i if violin you can play flute like i mean no i can't play flute but you can play the same music because mm -hmm. it's yeah so certain instruments just and it's even in the same key i mean uh, uh like signature register and everything yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. all right no, class, no, Carl, right. Can you yeah. I, I knew what you meant when you said key yeah. i know uh, yeah i meant key, like you know class you, you know class <laughs> that's what i mean oh yeah yeah, so yeah like yeah. so like flute and violin is both treble class what's bassoon? this is what we mean when we say oh my perfectly musical idea <laughs> is <laughs> 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 yeah. raise the seventh and drop the 15th four four have to no, no, none of that. It's just, can you make it sound more clunk? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm hearing it more clank. green. Can you make it sound greener yeah. and boxier? Mm. <laughs> Those are two uh, things that are actually heard in a studio one time when I was interning at a studio in Nashville. Like, yeah, I, I want it to sound more green. So, as what in, as in, like environmentally friendly or new. <laughs> I still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's, weird. That's when you need on your instrument the producer switch, which is just like a toggle that's not wired to anything. You go, yeah, hang on. Uh, let me try a different one. There you Check go. this out. <laughs> yeah, hey, well, that's, that's, same thing, oh, that's so much better. <laughs> that's it, dude. Yeah. That's what sound yeah. guys do uh, for guitar players live when the, the guitar player is like, I need more of me. The sound guy just you know, moves a fader that doesn't do anything until the guitar player goes, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although being, uh, having been on the other end of it, you also go, can I get more of myself, more of myself? No, there's no change. And we're like playing now. Well, okay. Sounds great. Yeah. Thanks. 
<laughs> okay, so we've covered a lot about the the creative process and stuff. So now we're going to start veering away from the creative process and the band because right everybody's a real human being and is more than what they write or play i know isn't that weird and that is part of the show <laughs> i'm a simulation you're a simulation <laughs> that's why we can't it's a robot. Or i've been saying brent's a robot for years <laughs> the audio issues that we're having it's not his internet connection it's right here i don't know what it is yeah. i think maybe it's because i'm on my phone and i don't know oh maybe my laptop mm -hmm. wasn't working, so I had to use my phone. Okay. Your, your well, picture I'm on does my look desktop, like... so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like, okay, sorry, we're interrupting. No, that's okay. No, like, yeah. it's fine. I just, <laughs> I, 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 it just now clicked in that Brent wore his slutty devil, which is like, he always wears and then regrets wearing afterwards. I and haven't like, worn it since before quarantine, and it is a lot tighter. That's uh, not true. Oh, it's dude, in the this hot video. dog is insane. Oh, it, man. I did wear it for the music video. That's it right. Is. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say that every opportunity you have. So <laughs> when you got you it, flaunted. So I, yeah, I was going to say your costumes, Brent and Carl. Your costumes look very familiar. So you must have worn them in videos. Um, I don't know if this one's been in a video, but I've worn it on stage. At oh, least. okay. That, that might have been yeah. what I saw. I think and it's in the Horror Beach video for like post. a hot second. It might be. And oh, it is in that latest social post too. You're right. For our yeah. uh, Star Bar show coming up. Yeah. But I, I think it's in the, the Horror Beach video, but I think you're wearing an alien mask like under it instead of your regular face. It's hard to tell. Yeah. That was a wild one. <laughs> that was a, the video making process is something that's. <laughs> there's a couple of six packs involved and, oh yeah know, there's that goes anyway long. sorry you want well, to get okay. to other, well, other aspects of life yes, you, let's talk well actually that did bring up a question though do you guys um you guys have people help you with making your videos like i think my, crew? my wife is and number one help helper on. um like number one yeah mo my wife melissa is like the queen of all that stuff. I mean, I went to film school, so I've been able to kind of, and then like tell her some of the video stuff, but she has just a supernatural gift for photography, <clears throat> excuse me, um, for photography. And she like has gone all in on it. Um, I guess self-taught, she like looks stuff up and researches and all that stuff. Um, but so the fact that I've kind of know stuff about editing, I can help her direct us basically. It's like, so we work a little bit as a team in that regards. And then, um, yeah, that's Melissa has been key to getting our videos done. For I don't know sure. if you watch her videos. Um, we only have two out right now. Yeah. The monster movie and horror beach. Oh, maybe I haven't seen that one. That doesn't sound familiar. Okay. Yeah. It's that a good one's fun. And that one, that one she's in and that one, Nikki Brent's girlfriend helped with as well. Um, and oh, our, no, our, you said horror beach. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen that one. Okay, yeah. I, misunder I misunderstood what you said, and suddenly I was like, well, no, I know I saw a second one that took place on a beach, and then I realized what you said. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, and our good friend Kara Caravan, um, who is like a local cosplayer, she helped with like all the, especially the girls' looks in that video. The guys' looks were all just kind of stupid crap we found on Amazon. And it was the girls, like, Halloween. The girls look amazing, yeah, and it's yeah. like because Kara knows stuff about body paint and all that stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> on to your next topic. Sorry. To... <laughs> so well, I, I wanted to say though before we go on, that, yeah, I, wanted to, I wanted to give more props to to Kyle because I, um, through my own you know job, I have a you know a fair amount of experience in like live production for TV, but all of my experience is in live production. You know, mainly like sports focused, and so I know a lot about how to set things up and how certain things should go and this and that. But every time we get into a video shoot, I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. I'm all ready. I've got production background. I don't know what the hell is going on because <laughs> now we're in like a studio space of we can do takes, we can set up scenes, we can set up this and that. Right. And in my whole world, it's like, well, was it on air? Okay. We're done. Great. Yeah. <laughs> well, so the reason Niles world, it's like, yeah. all right, we've got like, 
20 other things to consider with this one look, you know, like you're not thinking about these things. And so it's just like, it, it's blows my mind how I'm like, Oh yeah, great. That was good enough. But yeah. it wasn't right. <laughs> where that comes from. Um, Carl, uh, where that comes from is because of work. Uh, and well, what I do, Jude. You were, yeah, you're, it's, we, <laughs> you're right. We do work in like the opposite ends of the, uh, I guess the production industry live yep. and film. Yep. And, and I, yeah, I, I'm a colorist by trade. So basically the production goes out and shoots all day and then they drop the footage off with me and I do the first pass of color correction. So through that, I've been able to kind of learn quite a bit about setting up your shot list and kind of how to get like a wide shot and then getting close-ups on things and what like everything you need to get coverage so that at the end of the shoot, you make sure you have enough to be able to make something out of it. And that's where that comes from is I've absorbed that over, over years of seeing better people do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the, I'm the opposite way. I'm like the total engineer's approach of like, well, did you get, the shot on air and you could see and hear it. Okay. What's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, Oh man, that was really awful, but it already happened. So I'm like, I'm like, lift your chin up a little bit. Okay. Now tilt your head forward. Okay. Now like stand up straighter. Okay. You look great. <laughs> That's like I once, uh, I think I might've told you about this. I once got hired to be basically like the adult on set for a student film um, shot by some Emory kids. And it was shot right down the street from your old house, Kyle, right by uh, Anthony's pizza there. And, and, <laughs> and uh, like, it was an awful experience. <laughs> Good films usually are. It was so much. I, like every single scene and shot was the same thing. Of like, okay, we're set up. We got it. We did it. Why do we need? What are we doing? Like four or five more times. The exact. What are we doing? Oh yeah. It, well, it, and it if was you just only me. if you only have one camera and you want to get different angles, <laughs> you definitely have to do more than it's one. Just stuff that it never, ever <laughs> occurred to me, you know, and it's just funny every time that those worlds mix. Yeah. We even have different ways of wrapping cable. Oh, <laughs> that's probably not true. I'm just really bad at it. No, <laughs> it, it is true. I've had several film people tell me you have to go over, 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 whereas any live guy will tell you it's over, over. under or you oh. die. I've yeah. Or you die, like literally die because you'll get electrocuted or something. Uh, no, you'll just have like 200, 300 feet of cable that you have to unknot. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think, I think over under is the better way. And that's it's how we the do superior it. Superior method for sure. Oh, yeah. no, but I, a lot I, of lighting guys do over, over, over. And instead of twisting, they just like push it down. I mean, we're getting into a weird conversation. We're, we're getting very I just was, coiled I was over, over, and over and try and resist the twist in the first place by just pushing it into place. And I don't understand it. It doesn't just go over under. I wonder done. what they That's do. What on lifeguards do. Movie. Why wouldn't you do that? Lifeguards well, do. Someone, someone out there is going to understand this. Oh my God. Hopefully, can you? <laughs> hopefully, you internet people can understand the struggles. Over under is the superior method. Please wrap your cables over under. Okay. So, th what comes to mind is my husband, not only is, is he a musician and stuff, but he is also into carpentry and things. And he was showing me the other day, he had this really long extension cord. I mean, this thing is like the longest extension cord I've ever seen. It's yellow. It's like this big around. Mm -hmm. And he did this weird rope thing with it. And it's like, he held it up and it's really short. It's like daisy uh, chain. Like the, so you yeah. just pull on it. Is it that what apart? you're talking? Yeah. You just pull and it comes apart. And um, he was showing me like things he could do with and I that's was a just good like, way to what? do it, but that's not the way that I. <laughs> that's not what do you're it. talking about. That's okay. not. It's not the way I normally do it. That is a good way to do things. Um, it's just extra time consuming. <laughs> okay. Really pretty. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's really pretty and convenient. So I was just wondering if you have any cords that you could do a visual with. <laughs> Oh boy! I do oh, yes. boy. oh, oh boy. this is great. This is a good lesson. This is always <laughs> this is I, Bill Nye show. Right here. I need to. Oh. I need to see this. Every okay, time. so show us the over over the wrong way. So to do most it. people, honestly, though, this is so over over is bad, but the most cursed way to roll a cable 
this right here. Ooh, no, uh, no, 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 stop it. Stop it. it. I'm uh, guilty You see the, re- the reaction they just had? Even uh, the, even Kyle knows it's bad. Yeah, right? so I the just way, see the fibers breaking inside. Oh. The way a lot of people do too is you'll just coil in one direction the whole time. I'm so super guilty. Going. Yeah. Or right, I'll do it this way. Now, are you ruining that cord right now as we speak? Oh, oh no, 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 no. no. It's, okay. <laughs> I got I got Hot dog suits. Yeah. It's hot. <laughs> right? So Is it just most people just go over and then they'll go over because I'm making an overhand coil here. Over, over, oh, over. Over, now over. The problem is when you finish, the cord has a lot of twist in it. And so it wants to twist up and be tangled. <clears throat> but you can resist that. <laughs> oh, this is a real fun podcast. Oh, this is great. So you can you gotta do this that because by you doing what's up, called yeah. over under, right? So over you under. Go over uh-huh. and you twist one way, and then under you twist the other way. Yeah. So <sighs> now there's no twist in the cable. You keep going over under, and at the end of it, you toss it out, and there's no twist. Oh, yeah. look at and that! There's no knots. Oh yeah. my gosh! I'm it's gonna have like to doing highlight the opposite that. Opposite of what, uh, like phone cord, kind of almost. It's like you're unphone cording it while right. you're making it. Yeah. Exactly that. And so every time you make one loop, you make a loop in the opposite direction, so that the cord never actually twists. So when you pull it straight out, it's not tangled up. It just comes out straight, just like you had unrolled it. Going back to the band, this is why it takes Jesse like 45 seconds to set up on stage and it takes me like 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. Normally, I'm like, oh. normally setup goes, I'll set myself up and then I'll help Brent build the drum kit. And then both of us watch Kyle finish setting up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All because of the gorge. This has been the intellectual um, part of the show. (laughs) Anyone out there who didn't know, I meant you should roll your. No, I I messed that up. I meant education. This has been the educational aspect of the show. (laughs) Oh man, there's nothing intellectual about us. (laughs) I mean, I am wearing glasses. You can trust me. We are I on have glasses anymore. He, we used to be a full intellectual band, oh, but someone true. had to get laser eyes. <sighs> <laughs> well, I was going to say this is on the internet, so you can believe that every single word we're saying is true. Definitely you can clip that last true. little bit though, and be like, "How to Roll Cable" by Carl Sin. Just put yep. that on your YouTube channel. Watch the hits roll in. I bet. Yeah, well, you know. Well, how many other YouTube channels would have a video of so a hot that, like, dog rolling for that? Cables. Yeah, it's true. A, a hot dog teaches you how to roll cable. My husband started just he he works on a he's a chef on a ship. Uh, he does a lot of things, obviously, but his, <laughs> his his paying job is a chef on a ship, and um, he just started randomly like filming himself making cookies, and it was amazing awesome. how many hits he got. So. Carl in a hot dog outfit, rolling, I mean, winding cord. Over under method. Wrapping. That's cables. what people are going to be looking for is how to yeah. do under over under method. Yep. Wrapping yeah. cables. I, I, I honestly, I, I think there is potential for the hot dog Carl educational YouTube channel. Like, oh, I agree. Yeah. I'm <laughs> getting all kinds of things. vibe I from agree. the first Tomb Tones jam session. Hey. I'm like, this idea has legs. Like, it let's really listen. Does. <laughs> One of my degrees might be in bassoon performance, but the other is in music education. Yes. So I can teach you how to plug <laughs> in a cable. All right. You could there do you go. Music theory. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Slap like now. No, you like and subscribe copyright. to the hot dog man. Our generation <laughs> needs a Bill Nye, and it can be you. <laughs> <laughs> in a fifteen dollar hot dog suit, Carlson. This the hot dog suit, man. by the way, has been with me since two thousand four, maybe five. Wow, there's a significant oh uh, wow, significant amount of beer that's in this hot dog suit. <laughs> We have totally derailed your interview. I apologize. No, it's not, you know, and 
That, this I'm is pretty sure thing. this is what she signs up for by this saying, is, hey, yes, we're going to have an interview. Is, yes, Make sure is, you're drinking the whole yeah. time. <laughs> I'm, I'm about I'm about three quarters uh, of the way through my Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing all right. My, my second I, I'm almost empty blood. again. What's, you your, can, what's your time limit? You are, can we, see, are we doing okay? We're doing great. So um, the last person I talked to, we talked for two and a half hours. Okay. So, we're so just over we've one. only That's we're funny. only over one hour it there is no time limit i decided there's no I'm, time i'm having a great anymore. time I'm so a great am I. Time. <laughs> and yeah. you can see my vampire teeth now oh hell yeah oh i yeah. thought they were just sing individual fangs you've got like full-on like like the full like one, classic the, the, like, the, the ones that have like three teeth and then the fangs, and it's yeah, never, right. they never they've never normal. changed. Yeah. <laughs> it's been like that since as long as I can remember as a kid, you know, putting those in and you're like, oh, why does it have three front teeth? <laughs> well, I think the way those teeth always go for everyone is you put them in, you go, look, I'm a very Oh, God, yeah. it's been rolling down my chin. <laughs> it's just <laughs> yeah, ripping down your face. <laughs> <It's laughs> <It's real laughs> <laughs> But on the plus side, then you have a saliva covered hunk of plastic to carry around the rest of the night. Yeah. I'm like, what's better? Was like, were those better or like wax lips were another like? I was gonna say, yeah, you couldn't even talk with those, right? But you then just... you, you like over time, your teeth like kind of just start going into them, and then at the end of the mouth, eventually it breaks off, and you've got like a full on crayon in your mouth, <laughs> and you're just like, nah. <laughs> Have you seen the new ones they've come out with? I've been meaning to get some, particularly for this show, is they, they look real. Like, you can't see them, and then there's something that goes on the roof of your mouth, and you touch it, and it literally, like, shink, gives I've you seen those on TikTok. Yes, those look amazing. <laughs> yeah. And they're wax lips that, like, no, oh, they're, vampire, no, they're vampire teeth. Oh, like, oh, okay. They fit. They, I, the they just have a mouth, mechanism that goes on the roof of your mouth. And then ah. just, and it looks like regular and teeth. And then you touch, you push the mechanism and then the fangs come out. Oh, it's that's like true blood. Like, like they just, yeah. 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 Like, like movie Re stuff. They're like retractable. <laughs> okay. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So yeah, I've tried, I, I bought online some that I could wear on the show and it came without the adhesive. I'm like, why would anybody send the things yeah. without the adhesive? So here's the question. Which would be scarier? Vampire teeth that were retractable and shot out like, you know, whooshing, like that? Or like switchblades and they went whooshing? Oh. And like switch came out blades sideways. that come out of your mouth? Like, no, they come like it's normal. Like, like they, they, they sizes, swing but like instead that. Or, uh, what are they called? Canines, whatever. But instead like of like a butterfly longer, knife, right? They go or no, they like go, a whoop. Whoop. yeah, they like flip uh, down. That's that would be very interesting. That's way more unsettling than the like Wolverine shake, like right. Like if they just grow, then that's like oh, okay, I'm, you're yeah. a monster, I guess. But if they like flip they sideways in out, like yeah, maybe no. that's like a blade <laughs> sequel. Switch. So like it would be up here in your gum and then just like yeah, where would that even go? And just you know, have kind of a puffy lip. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, like the, uh, uh, the risk of like like stabbing yourself with your own teeth is very high. With it'd have to be like the it. like you know the animals that have pockets in their jaw for teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm like sorry, snakes, snakes and jaw. stuff, right? Snakes have little pockets, yeah, like gators or something. <laughs> Where do those go. teeth go? You know, you should be a writer, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> you just made up a monster. <laughs> yeah, but my whole book would be: What if a vampire, <laughs> but their teeth were switchblades? <laughs> Whoa, I like it. Oh, that's true. You're uh, if you wrote a book, it would be very light on the details. It'd be like, <laughs> you saw a creature that was like a vampire, only different. It was really creepy. It you was... can imagine it. All right, <laughs> it was yeah, creepy. <laughs> move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, know, you gotta you gotta take advantage of the imagination. That's the most that. powerful tool. <laughs> Why write words when you can get your readers to just imagine it for you? <laughs> Duh. Yeah. Oh, I've read some pretty <laughs> That's bad. That's like writing. how the best horror movies are. 
<laughs> exactly. They're like you yelling away all the thing, details. And it's like, ah, no. And then like the thing is on the other side of the camera. You don't see it until the like last 30 seconds. Well, I mean, come on. You know, half the reason why Jaws is so good is because you don't see the shark because the shark was really fucking lame. <laughs> so, <laughs> classic. Or like, they were like, signs. okay, we can't really show this shark because it looks terrible. And, and it, it makes sinking it barrier that you don't see the shark. Yep. <laughs> What were we talking about? I don't remember. You know, Probably we were supposed to, we were getting off the subject of the creative process. So yes. we're off the subject. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a part of the show where usually I ask, okay, so do you guys play music for a living or do you have a day job? We talked about that a little bit already. I, I mentioned I was a colorist. Yeah. You guys go ahead. I'm happy to answer any questions about that as well. But yeah, y'all go ahead. Introduce your stuff. Uh, no, I, I also have a day job. I work for a company that streams high school sports. Okay. Um, and uh, my day job is I, I work for a trucking company. So <laughs> hell yeah, brother. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I'm a yoga therapist, so I uh, excellent. Yeah, I teach I've yoga. Done, uh, I've done the like, uh, oh man, what's it called? Yoga. Oh, I thought I had a clever name. It might have been just been like yoga and beer or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> like yeah. one of those things at you know like Sweetwater Brewing here in Atlanta. I've done it a couple times where you, you know go and do an hour of yoga and then get like four beers or something yeah <laughs> yeah all the health benefits of yoga yeah, and it just completely level, undo. level one like easy you know what though i gotta say i like doing it a couple times it did feel good like, yeah by the I end of it i mean they have you do the, the relaxed pose where Lumbar. you just lay on the ground <laughs> for a bit. But, like you feel good afterwards like it, oh, it yeah. was a great bunch of stretches and I mean, you know how yoga goes. Yeah. <laughs> Carl, are you mansplaining yoga right now? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, well, maybe. No, no, no. No, it here. is. It's really beneficial. I don't know if you guys have ever done it, but like it, it really felt good afterwards. The first time I was skeptical because, you know, I didn't know what to, to think going in. I had never done anything or just seen like, you know, on TV and people like to make fun of it. But I mean, it did. It felt good. It is. Yeah. It's yeah, something no. special for certain. Yeah. Yeah. I would there, say if, there's like if you crazy... two guys haven't done it yet, I would recommend you go and find like a level one, just like easy peasy or do the yoga and bruise or whatever it's called. And it's fun. I mean, you just yeah. feel good afterwards. And you oh, yeah. Good. No, I've done yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have not. You haven't. No. You're the odd man out. Yeah, you so am. In I a am. horror movie, you would totally die. Be the first one to die, Kyle. Or maybe being the odd man out, I'm the like weird survivor oh they oh, kill all the yoga die. users i die in like all our songs all right kyle come on oh. get up we're gonna do a sun salutation real quick all right. oh, there you go oh uh, i don't know what that means <laughs> you don't <laughs> <laughs> i can i can look and mimic but i can't remember what the things mean <laughs> yeah we can't really do it on camera <laughs> yeah. there's like lunges and down dog and oh no dog. you don't want to see me do that yeah what's up dog what's up dog up dog uh, is where you're in a back bend and you push into I, the floor I, and you lift deep. up your. It's <laughs> thank like, you, you thank you, your, Carl. <laughs> thank you, Carl. <laughs> down dog is the little upside down V, like your head and your feet. Yeah, <laughs> can't do yoga on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Although I've been teaching yoga on Zoom for almost two years now. Oh, that's yeah. so weird. Yeah, it is. It's been so tough, but that's what I've been doing. So <laughs> I feel like honestly, yoga is like probably a good candidate for an online exercise class, though. Yeah, you know, I guess it just depends on like I wouldn't be able to do it here, but there were several times I have a yoga room and a laptop and I guess you know, almost need just... someone else to like you need someone to be the model demonstrator and then you would need someone to be like the keep an eye on the whole class yeah. to make sure they're not hurting themselves. <laughs> yeah. But that's not how, you know, so I'm just both. And uh, oh, I'm just yeah. like doing really easy. I do like chair yoga and stuff with my folks. Cause they're, oh, I like that. I do pain, uh, chronic pain relief. And so a lot of the times it's like, 
I'm working with people that can't get up and down off the floor. So I do chair yoga or something. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Pays the bills. <laughs> hey. Um, so Kyle, would you uh, say a little more about the colorist thing? Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are, what are you, what are, do you want the spiel about it or do you have any particular questions? How, like, how long will the spiel mean? <laughs> how long I mean, will the take? No, just tell it. What, what would you like to know about it? I guess. Um, well, lo- what does an average day look like? Okay. You? Um, night. So, <laughs> night. An, an average night. Yeah. It's so dark. production shoots during the day. <laughs> usually shoots during the day. Um, I usually start 12 to 15 hours after that. Um, At the beginning of a project, I will interface with the director of photography a lot and um, kind of craft the look for a project. So if you think about like, like filters that you might put on a photo and something like that, like all those controls that you've got on Instagram, like, like contrast and brightness and all that stuff. I've got that like on crack when I'm like oh. working, like I've got like dials and wheels and like all these knobs and everything. And I've got nice. scopes that I'm looking at and I'm like evaluating all these different levels and things like that. Um, so we'll, so we'll come up with it. He might say like, Oh, I'm going for kind of a faded desaturated thing with this, or I'm going for like a really like, you know, sometimes a, a bleach bypass, which is kind of like a really high contrasty yellowish kind of so like look mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. So sometimes they'll say stuff like that, or sometimes we just, we just talk it through and they just look at the footage and then I'll send them. So they'll send me everything and I've got to make sure everything adheres to that look. Um, Mm -hmm. So they might shoot an average of anywhere from 150 to I've done as many as like 600 shots in one night um, where I've got to make them all look like that thing. And then whatever that concept is for the look of the movie and they all have to match each other too, to where like, if I pull up a still from a camera, it looks like B camera and C camera as oh, well. Okay. Um, so that when the editor gets the stuff the next morning, they can just immediately start and there's no continuity issues with the look. Um, and that when the director and the producers see the first cut, it's already got the kind of general idea. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the general idea for what the, the look of the project is going to be. And then after they've done the edit and after they've done, and it's usually the look that goes into the marketing as well. They might do a little bit of touch up for the marketing, but that's usually like when you, when the trailers come out and everything, like that's usually what goes on those. They might do like trailer coloring and stuff like that. And then at the end, after they bring everything in and conform it, then they do uh, a finishing colorist goes over the whole thing and does what's called a digital intermediate. And that's when they go in and they say, what if this like person's like skin was like, slightly different and what if this person's like Mm -hmm. hair was slightly different and like they might not always go into that level of detail but so basically i'm setting up the the bases so that whatever inconsistencies happen on set i I smooth out so that the person down the line is able to then take it away multi-step process yeah so Um, what was a project that you've done that people would recognize uh i did the netflix show haunting of hill house oh okay remember that one Oh. Um, I did uh, a, a Jason Bateman movie game night. I was really happy with how that one turned out. There was one on Hulu that just came out called vacation friends um, that I was really happy with the way it turned out. Um, there's a lot I've done. Oh. Like I've probably done almost three dozen or so. Um, nice. Yeah. So it's okay. been, yeah, I've been doing that for like 10 years. It's been, it's been an adventure for sure. Yeah. So, so Brent, what does a day in your life look like? You were saying. <laughs> so I, this is a new job. I just got started a month ago. Um, okay. But it, yeah, no, it's basically uh, babysitting truck drivers. So okay. yeah, I, I work in an office, like, you know, daytime, whatever. And uh, it's a company that transports like parts for machines that make paper it is a very niche market that i did not know existed but apparently paper mills require these like pieces that are like 40 feet long and like 
really awkward oh. to transport. So there's a whole specialized trucking industry for it. Would you say, Brent, that you're like the dunder to someone's Mifflin? I would. <laughs> yes, yes. No, it, it is as a right. b- very big fan of The Office. When I got this, <laughs> I got this job through a temp agency, and um, I was like, "Wait, so That's I'm a like weird name for your girlfriend." I'm working. No, I got I had No, my girlfriend does work there, but I got the job through the temp agency. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was like, "Oh my god." this isn't a paper company, but it's paper company adjacent. Yeah. I'm like, you know, <laughs> that's so exciting. It is. It, oh, it's so it's, exciting. It's, I'll talk about all these. My life is an office reference. These creative <laughs> visions. And I'm like, yeah, I, my job is to, you know, uh, you know, get on the phone with a trucker at eight o'clock in the morning and be like, you know, where in, you know, the middle of nowhere, Mississippi, are you right now? <laughs> we're a little, little, little eagle. I'm on down on the I-95. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Convoy. Do you have a name I for did you get, yet? No. Wait, wait, are you like, dispatched? I got unreasonably excited the other day because I looked at a map and two of my trucker teams that were out on the West Coast were heading back home. And they were within like a couple miles of each other. And I was so mad that they didn't call each other and like, wait to like actually form a convoy oh, yeah. that is a huge missed Dang opportunity it. yeah Come on, do, How could they better. do this yeah are, are you dispatch is that your title or is that your department no my title is like customer service agent something i, I, I just I, call you radio <laughs> no no there's a different person who has what we call the bat phone which is the cell phone that all the truckers have so oh, whatever yeah. They have an issue they can call it but uh yeah no i i'm like a territory manager or something okay. I, I, I didn't know, know if you were sitting there on the cd like pushing buttons being like yeah talking to unit 91 <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't call me unit 91 radio <laughs> All right, and carl what does your average day look like a day in the life of carl sin Uh, Well, it honestly varies a lot Um, because my job is tied to high school sports. It's very seasonal in our level of like busyness. Um, We just hit kind of our fall lull, I guess I'll say, where the start of the season is over and like, you know, pretty much all states have started their fall sports and we have yet to start fall championships, although that's, I think, starting up this coming week, maybe with like Oklahoma cheer or something. Um, <laughs> that, I obviously don't work in that part of the company. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, a big part of my job is uh, with an automated broadcast system that we use and kind of smoothing out kinks that we've found especially in the uh like the scoreboard aspect of it so this system is able to basically without any human interaction um you know stream a full sport game or honestly any kind of event in the venue but really the big item is that it can stream sport events like football and basketball and soccer and all that um and you know it it We'll take in scoreboard data and incorporate that to the broadcast. You have, you know, a score graphic and all that kind of stuff. And so a lot of what I do is focused around that and how to improve our processes and, you know, and whatnot. Um, I talked a little bit how I used to be actually involved in our like live production. Um, We used to shoot a lot more stuff ourselves and go out and do, you know, live, uh, you know, sports productions. But um the, these days, it's all, you know, a lot of email kind of stuff, yeah. <laughs> less, yeah. less in the field work, less, uh, you know, installing camera systems and things and more. Uh, I remember like, one time, emails. one time you were like a guy short and you like called me and you were like, hey, man, you want to make a quick hundred bucks and come help me uh, film this high school football game tonight? And it was actually at our old high school. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that is down. True. <laughs> um, yeah, I got that, Brent that to come was, and do uh, audio for a, a game at Brookwood. Go Broncos! Yeah. <laughs> Go Broncos! <laughs> oh, cool. It was fun. You were a little lost little lamb. 
<laughs> doing, doing some live audio there. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, you would go like, world. Oh though. yeah, just like, you know, take it, I mean, I laugh, C, but take this well, and you know, plug it into the box on C truck, and then run the cable over to the you know, blotomizer over. And yeah, I'm like, no, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I laugh, okay, totally. It's, it's exactly what I was saying earlier. Is that yeah, Kyle and I both work in production, you know, but our experience and even our like worlds are just so different that trying to step into the film world is a foreign environment to me. And I'm sure if, you know, if Kyle were to go to a live environment and be like a, Oh yeah. You know, a V1 <laughs> on a show where you're the live camera shader. It's just like, dude, this is, even, I, right. this is it's such a different environment. And I don't even the, know what that means. The like, pace, yeah. <laughs> the workflow is so, so different that it, when I started my same. job, I like, I, I had already been like freelancing as like an editor for years. And I like already had, like, I went to school for film, like I said before. And like, even then getting started in the industry, like it was like my first week I was like, y'all are speaking like a completely foreign language. Like, I don't even know what any of these words mean or anything like that. And I had to be like, can you, can you say that like again in like normal people terms? Right. And you just, uh, yeah, you just, and I find myself now because being 10 years in and like we have freelancers come in that are like, you know, fresh out of college and stuff. And I'll just be going a million miles an hour and I'll just look over and be like, how much of that can you catch? And they're like, some. <laughs> you know, I definitely need a refresher. Yeah. yeah, no, it's just funny because I mean, like the stuff that you do for all the film work totally exists in the live world, but it's all done live, you know, so yeah. someone is is like, OK, well, here's my best guess of making every camera look the same right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, the lighting is changing constantly and <laughs> like they're all in different <laughs> positions. So none of them have the same light environment, Like, yep. okay. which is why when you watch like a game or something on TV and like you see like they cut and you notice it like looks different when yeah. it looks different oh, that's yeah, because they weren't it's like a different time of day because yeah. there is a professional person there that makes all the cameras look the same and yeah. sometimes okay, but i just... hate i hate the new camera that they're using on some of the nfl broadcasts that makes it look like a madden game do not like no oh, mm -hmm. uh Sorry. Yeah. I don't pay attention to sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay, sports. <laughs> yeah. I'm like one of the most unsports person on the planet. But um, right I want to know who that little fella or or girly oh, this is. This is uh, She is my one-year-old kitten, and she was very jealous that I was not paying attention to her, so she hopped up in my lap. Yeah, I'm surprised mine hasn't visited. Usually he visits me. I have a, he's huge. He's only six months old, but he's probably about her size. And his name is Baphomet and he's a black cat. <laughs> All <laughs> right. I'm, so my cat's not down here, but I'm looking up a picture of him for you because he's a 17 year old black cat named Mr. Tibbles. <laughs> Are, can you put that on your screen or something? How can you? Yeah, probably. Oh. I don't know. If you have like it on it. your computer, you oh, can oh. okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? I was like, wow, that's gonna be so technologically advanced. And no. Yep, <laughs> yep, totally tech. <laughs> well, I so cannot believe this technology exists. This is how I take screenshots all the time. I'll take a <laughs> photo of my TV and send yep. it to our group chat and be like, look at the screenshot. <laughs> See, me, I, 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 I will I will take my phone and I'll go to work and put it on the photocopier. And make a Xerox of it, and then I'll <laughs> mail it to you. And that's how that it sounds <laughs> really bad for your phone. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna guess that that's probably not healthy. I just recently had to send some stuff back that I ordered oh, online, awesome. and uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Mr. Tibbles, right? Mr. Tibbles, he's seventeen. Oh <laughs> wow! Gosh, just look at that little face. Oh, look at that face. Oh. Half of it. <laughs> Get Baphomet <laughs> over here. Um, he looks very similar. Um, but I just recently had to send some stuff back that I ordered online and it wasn't right. So I sent it back and Amazon did not give, you know, like it was returned, but it wouldn't let me print the label. It just said, oh, just take this into U US, the UPS and show them the 
the little VR, VR code, code or whatever, oh, yeah. you know, the super yeah. code. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so I don't do my email on my phone. I do it on my lap, my uh, desktop. And I don't, I don't do stuff on my phone. I don't want my phone notifying me of anything. I just, <laughs> and like my phone and my Smart. computer are separate. And so <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to take a picture. <laughs> I totally took a picture Hell of the yeah. code <laughs> with my phone <laughs> from my desk and it worked. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, awesome. Nice. When I opened the picture <laughs> and they scanned it, I was like, it totally worked. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have to say though, that's a, at least like a practical reason to do that. Almost every single screenshot that I have that I've sent to, to these guys is uh, a photo of a funny name in like Rocket League. Because <laughs> we, we play a lot of Rocket League, me and Brent. And uh, it's just like funny team names that I've seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, half my phone is pictures of Jesse's TV. <laughs> At least it's not like it used to be where there would be lines through it. You know, now, now it actually works. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what uh, you guys just did dragon con. Um, it's almost Halloween. So I, I know that Halloween is a super busy time for you guys. What's around the corner for you. Uh, so we're working on. A little acoustic redo of Monster Movie. That's been a big, a big recent project that we've been working on. Uh, it's going to be on a compilation that a friend's doing, and we'll probably put out the single on our Spotify and all that stuff. That has been a lot of fun. I mentioned earlier I played classical guitar in college, and I got to pull out the nylon string for that. It's Dang like it. kind of mariachi vibe. Um, and then we've got a couple shows coming up. We're playing. We we kind of took it a little easier this year because of sure. everything going on. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. and it's like I mean, we were when Dragon Con was coming up. It was like they booked us, and then we're like waiting for like the Delta thing took off, and then we're like, yeah. is this, is this gonna actually going to happen? happen? Yeah. So we've been a little hesitant to like go overboard booking new stuff, but we do have a show October twenty third at the Star Bar, which. Atlanta people, if you're watching, um, and depending on when this airs, um, it'll air oh, in. It was a great show. It went so good. Oh, oh yeah, sure. yeah. We should do two we cuts. All right. So do one cut where it's like, okay, coming up in October, we got the Star go. Bar in Atlanta. Everybody, make sure you I come out. I can tell you it. when it's going to go out. This will go out on October 9th. Okay. Oh, okay. All, right. All right. So yeah. October 23rd. Star has bar. yet to happen um uh and then uh and then we we're <clears throat> supposed to play um at boo at the zoo as well on the 31st oh, yeah. we were supposed oh. to halloween yes yeah so oh, we've got so right now too we had one more and it went away because of everything we talked about so yeah it's been it's just been up in the air and then we've got i, I am i am unreasonably excited for boo at the zoo this is an event at zoo atlanta like kids in Halloween kind they like trick or treat it's adorable nice. and we're going to be singing songs about decapitation and stuff <laughs> yeah, I'll children. have to there might I'll I'll just have to do a yeah. once over on everything to like make sure like yeah we're going to want to curate that set list pretty well I maybe yeah. yeah I mean I think like for the most part, probably, on but Luke. I don't want any angry phone calls yeah I'm going to go ahead and say taxidermize the song about you know killing and stuffing your lover to be a permanent doll probably not a good candidate for the kids I mean, it's got a lot of good like doo-wop harmonies and stuff people won't even notice kids love yeah. you, can, you can do the mumble you can do the mumble singing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm gonna have you there you go okay then, like, uh, and then totally then totally <laughs> random but i just something thought, uh, i don't know if y'all ever watch parks and rec but like oh, yeah. Chris pratt's character where he's told that he needs to sing for kids. And he's like, he's like, I just wrote a song called sex hair. I can't. And then he's like, no, I got it. I'm going to change it for good. I, you got sex bears. <laughs> <laughs> you can that, do that like that. into my head. Johnny, Johnny How do we make that, it family friendly? <laughs> you that, can do like the jazz singers do the doo-wop, doo-wop, 
That's what I figured. If, I, if I'm like, if I'm doing it, and I hit a moment where I'm like, eh, do something. I'll, just, yeah. Yeah, I'll improv my way through I'm it. Gonna um, have you something, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then always something, yeah. And then we are working on new material. <laughs> I just recorded guitar parts for. Uh, I mean, I'll, they're all songs we've done live before. I, I don't think there's anything new on the next album that we haven't played at least live yet, but that'll be new for everybody else. Yeah. Um, you're new really things. underselling it, Kyle. You gotta be like, it's brand new. Yeah. It, no. <laughs> okay. Well, world yes, premiere. But <laughs> I'm two Halloween rum punches in. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little less filtered right now. Um, He's like, everybody's heard this shit. Why are we even recording it? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So the, the version. I'm going to take my last album, drink. My last for the drink. album. It's, it's different. But yeah, we're recording new stuff for that. Uh, and that's it's the recording process is kind of a, a, an ongoing. Sure. It's we do everything very DIY. So like we work with friends to get the drums done. And then like, we all like, like I said, I'm in the studio, which is like my office. bedroom, <laughs> And then Carl is in his studio, which is like our, his basement. Slash, yeah. Is that the room you sleep in? No. <laughs> oh. God, what, then, what do you think of, what do you think of me, man? I don't know. I, don't I have know a bed. I own a bed. All right. We don't know your life. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen your bedroom. That's weird. Well, show me your bedroom. It'd be, it'd be weirder um, if you were very familiar with his bedroom. We just we just sit and play with each other's hair. Um, <laughs> I twirl his beard. Um, <laughs> but but, uh, but yeah. So so we'll we do everything as much DIY as we can. We've we don't. I mean, we all have a little bit of a background in recording, so we try to save money. And then it also sure. gives us more opportunity to like, I didn't really like the way that one sounded. Let's do 5,000 more takes of it until it sounds like we actually know how to play the stuff. I think then, that's the bigger key is that it lets us be more obnoxious with ourselves on the recording process, because yeah. I know I'm that same way of yeah. I'm almost embarrassed when other people have to record me because I like to do it. Over and over and over and over yeah. and over. I did well. I did. I did Babadook yesterday, which Babadook this is Babaduki is like a song, literally twelve bar blues, and I probably did thirty takes of it. Yeah. And I'm like, I know that feel. I'm like, I should be able to play. It's just when you hear yourself on a recording. I'm yeah. sure you as well. Like, oh gosh, yeah. And you're just like, it's yeah. different when it's live. I can play that song through a thousand times and be happy with every performance of it. And then I go back and listen to the recording and I'm like, mm. <laughs> which ooh, pro tip. All right. Any young budding musicians out there, you want to practice, record yourself. Yep. And listen to yep. it. That is they like made then your have an tip. existential you crisis will not about be how your bad own you brain yeah. on how you performed it. Yep. You record yourself and you listen to it and you go, wow. I really yep. did sound like that. Yep. Yeah. So I had embrace the cringe, embrace yes, it, let yes. it do you. it. So along those lines, um, I had a, I have, or I should say have, I mean, I haven't had a lesson since COVID started, but um, I have a violin, private violin teacher. And that was the first thing he said was record yourself and listen to it. You will never you, believe you your you own the, ears and brain. Yeah. You have to record yourself to yeah. hear how you actually play and sound. And, yeah. And you get the existential crisis out of the way. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> I mean, all right. Have you ever listened to yourself speak on recording your own voice? Yeah, it's like that. Why wouldn't your playing sound different? You right. know? Yeah. And, and, you know, but it's, it, there's another thing that kind of goes along with writers is um, uh, read your stuff out loud. So like mm -hmm. when I write something and I'm not, I read my whole before my novel ever gets sent off to my publisher. I read that sucker from front to back out loud and it super helps. So there's all sorts of reasons for all of that. Definitely yeah. catch flow issues. I'm yeah. sure there's yeah. plenty of times I've written lyrics too. And I, and it looks great on paper and then I play it for the first time and then hear all the metering issues that I've, created for myself and i've got to like <laughs> yeah. i've got to come up with other words for that yeah. <laughs> yeah you have to hear it somehow outside of yourself yeah yeah Definitely. there's a there's a common thing the theme that keeps coming up with these talks and it's like get out of your own way 
So <laughs> all of those things help you get out of your own way. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think um, it seems like it's coming to a natural close. We've almost <laughs> been doing this for two hours. Almost. Not quite. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so, time has flown. I've had yeah, a great time. I've had yeah, a great time, awesome. you guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. You've asked a lot of questions, I think, that we have never really gotten to talk about very oh, much. sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially some of the, the creative process stuff, I think, is always good to kind of revisit because it's like, you there's a little bit of self-evaluation there and yeah definitely yeah and uh, and i i just i i like asking different questions so i i hope that you know i try i try to get away from the usual questions and and at the same time get away from the full just interview kind of i thing What's so your favorite we've talked <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been great. who are your top three those kind of musical questions, influences yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you want us to say where our stuff is too? Yes, please do. I was going to say where the internet, the, the internet, internet. <laughs> yes. dive deep and you might come across it. Um, our, Look us uh, up on yeah. the dark web. So we are the tomb tones, T O M B T O N E S. Uh, Yes, uh, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that one. No, uh, if yeah. you want to hear our music, we're on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, all that good stuff. Um, you can find us on Batcave Records. The easiest way to get to all our stuff is thetombtones.com. T-H-E-T-O-M-B-T-O-N-E-S.com. Mickey uh, Mouse. <laughs> and then you can also just look us up on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. Those are the main two. Um, and we'll see you there. Okay. Happy Halloween. Yes. You guys have anything else to say? Hot dog. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Stay spooky. There you go. <laughs> Brent, your turn. Uh, uh, no, Jesse just destroyed my will to live with that okay. one. <laughs> uh, so this right, has been a perfect this interview. Has been <laughs> This has been Titles, Talk, and Tipples. I'm Jude Maddox Hall. This has been the Tomb Tones, Carl Sin, Brent Cognito, Kyle Ransom King. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Have a wonderful Halloween. Thank you. Happy, Thank Halloween. You. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching Titles, Talks, and Tipples. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like and subscribe. <laughs> we are fucking professional. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's going in. <laughs> it is. I don't send I don't send it, send it, 